it's Melissa from Porch Swing Creations. Today I want to share with you this little luminary snow globe that I made. I think it's really sweet for around the holiday time. You can insert a battery operated tea light down there. It shines off the glimmer paper in the back but it's also during the day when it's not lit up. Just a really pretty little decoration. So let's go ahead and I will show you how I put this together. First thing you're going to need is some silver glimmer paper and I've cut from the circle framelits the largest circle that comes, or second largest circle, sorry, that comes in that set. So we need one of those. Then I've chosen a DSP. In this case um, it's called the Winter Wonderland DSP and again I've just cut that largest circle from that. Then you're going to want to cut a second circle out of that DSP of the same size. And this time, once you get that second circle cut, you're going to want to take the third largest framelit from the circle framelit set, and you're going to want to center that inside the larger circle and run that through the big shot. Then, of course, you can just keep that center circle for another project. So right now, all we're going to need is this little frame. So after we've done that, you're going to want to cut a couple of pieces of the same DSP paper into strips. So the first strip that you're going to need cut is two and three quarter inches wide by the full length of the DSP, so 12 inches. Then you're going to need one more piece. And this one is going to be the same width, so two and three quarter inches. This time it's going to be one and a half inches wide. And the reason that we need to do that is we need to reach around the full circumference of this circle. So we need to add that little bit extra DSP. So I'm going to give you a little formula so that regardless of what size circle you choose to make your snow globe from, you can easily figure out the circumference. So what you're going to do is measure the diameter of the circle that you have. In this case, this one is about four and one quarter inches wide, or round, sorry, diameter. Um, then you're going to multiply that times pi, which is 3.14. In this case, that gave me 13.35. Now, that just gets me around the full circumference of the circle. That doesn't allow me to glue these two little pieces together. That doesn't allow me to um, glue and have a slight overlap once I finish my project. So I've gone ahead and I've added an extra, you know, little bit to get me to that 13 and a half inches um, just to make sure that I can fully get around that circle. So once I've done that, I'm going to score the length of each top and bottom piece of these little pieces of DSP down to one quarter inch. After I've scored, I'm going to take my paper snips and I've cut little tabs across both sides. So these tabs are roughly a quarter inch wide. The reason that I've made them so tiny is it gives me better um, ability to shape the DSP. The larger the tabs, the less it wants to bend for you. It'll give you some sharp edges, doesn't make a right nice round circle. So smaller tabs is better in this case. The last thing that I've done before we're going to attach these pieces together is on this smaller piece I've taken the smallest circle that comes in this in the framelit set and I've just kind of eyeballed that in between the score lines of this piece. It doesn't have to be exact but you know just just eyeball it and I've run through that through the big shot. Once you do that later on when we go to assemble everything this little hole is going to give us the ability to um, insert that battery operated tea light inside our snow globe. So we are ready to begin assembly. So the first thing we're going to do is take away the backing off of this tape and tear adhesive. I always get the name wrong of this stuff. I don't know why. Maybe I should make up my own name. So I've added a piece onto either side and I'm just going to join these two together. And if your DSP has a pattern, you try to line it up as best you can. That way it looks a little bit more seamless and put together when your project is complete. So after you've done that, you're going to take your piece of silver glimmer paper and I've added the tape and tear adhesive to the back of that as well, just pieces all the way around. 
The reason I've chosen to do this instead of, say, the multi-purpose liquid glue is you, you can use this. There's nothing wrong with using this. I just find that the wait time is a little longer. It doesn't stick as quickly as I'd like, and I'm impatient. And I also find that it's just not as messy. I don't want to see glue on the front side of my DSP. My project is finished, and it looks a mess, and I feel as though I've ruined it. So now I'm going to uh, slowly start... Um, putting my DSP around my silver glimmer paper. I've removed that adhesive off the back and we're just going to line it up so that the inside of the DSP that you don't want to show is of course on the inside of the snow globe. I want this showing so I'm going to leave that on the outside and all I'm going to do is slowly work my way around this circle, putting those tabs into place. And take your time with it. I mean, don't rush it. You want it to look, you know, as good as it possibly can. Okay. And I've been touching this piece of glimmer paper for way too long with the backing off that tape, so it's not sticking nearly as well as it did when I first took the backing off. But we'll work our way through. Okay, so I've gotten to the end. And you'll see there I have a small overlap, which is exactly what I wanted. So now what I'm going to do is I want to remove that second piece of backing off my side strip there, discard that, and I want to line these up and glue it all together. So we have, let's see, it doesn't want to stick as well. Oh, me and my tacky fingers. Okay. So this hole that we've created is going to become the bottom of our snow globe. So just keep that in mind while we work on the rest of the assembly. Always be cautious and remember where that is. So let's finish off what we're doing first. We'll clean up our edges. So this second piece of circle DSP that we cut earlier, we're just going to tack that down into place. And again, if your DSP has a pattern, in this case I didn't necessarily line it up, but if it does and you want it to look a little more finished, you can make sure that those patterns line up when you glue this piece down. So for this case, you could use hot glue, you could use more tape and tear, um, whatever you like. I'm just going to use some Tombow and I'm going to glue that down just so that it hides all those little tabs and makes it look all pretty. Okay. So let's just push that down so that it adheres into place. Okay. So you have your basic shape of your snow globe now. So the next thing we're going to do, there's a couple ways that you could do this. I just seem to find that when I was assembling the inside pieces, I found it easier to be able to see kind of where everything was going to finish, line up. So I wanted to assemble as much as I could, even though it left my fingers with kind of a tight spot to work in. This is the way I like to do it. If you find it easier to maybe do the next step that I'm going to show before this one, please go ahead and do that as it works for you. So I'm going to run a little bit of glue along this inside tab and then I'm going to layer my little frame on top. For this case, I'm still going to use um, the Tombow. You could use hot glue. I wouldn't suggest using the, t the double stick tape because with those little tabs on there, it might get a little bit harder to line everything up. So again, I'm keeping in mind that my little hole for my tea light is at the bottom and I'm going to line this up so that it runs my little pattern runs horizontally 
So here you're probably going to want to get your fingers in there. You're going to want to kind of make your snow globe, give it a little bit of shape. Make sure everything's lined up on the edges there. This takes a little bit to play with um, until that glue gets tacky and sticks. You could always put that glue on, leave it for, you know, half a minute or so. Let it get good and tacked up before you do this part. But, as always, I'm impatient. I want to see results yesterday. Okay. If you have to, try not to play with it or squeeze it after you got it in place. Let it just kind of set up. I'm just going to let that firm up. So I'm just going to set that aside and I will show you the next step. So there are these cute little sleigh ride framelits that Stamping Up just came out with. I think they're just adorable. I love them. So for this snow globe, I decided to use the little trees and the little houses. So I cut two pieces of vellum and I cut for the houses, I cut the piece to be four and a quarter inch or four and a half inches long by two and a quarter inches high. And the way I chose my length was I kind of took the diameter of my snow globe and I added a little extra so that I could create some tabs on the side and adhere the little cutouts on the side. So I did that for the houses. Um, the trees I cut to three and a quarter inches long by one and three quarter inches high, simply because, as you can see in the example, I wanted the houses to sit higher in the snow globe than the trees. So you have to keep that in mind. The other thing that you're gonna be watchful for is um, when I go to do the houses, let me just see here, do I have a darker piece of paper so that this shows up a little bit better? Let's just use a file folder here. Um, you're going to notice that when you go to lay down this framelit, uh, it's kind of meant to cut along the edge of a piece of paper. But if you cut along the edge of the paper, then you've left yourself no room to create a little tab to adhere inside the snow globe. So what I did is I pushed the framelit kind of into the center of my piece of vellum, ran that through the big shot. Now of course that leaves you with this little, you know, not cut through, but that's fine. Take a piece of, or take your paper snips and just kind of cut a piece so that you have it like that. Now the trees are the exact same thing. They, they are meant to cut off the side of the paper. I didn't want it to be that way, so I pushed them more towards center, but not totally center because I want them to offset from the houses. And I ran that through the big shot. That, of course, leaves me with this little piece that's still attached. Just going to take paper snips and kind of cut it on a little bit of a rounded angle. That way it gives me the trees and the houses more centered on the cardstock. Kind of a little cheat tool so that you get more use out of your framelits. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to start with the houses and hopefully this is tacked up enough that it's not going to be mad at me when I start pushing it around. Give it as much time as it needs. I'm going to fold small little tabs on either side of this and hopefully I get this right. Um, this can be the, the, I found when I was assembling mine that um, this is the most finicky part of the entire assembly process. So if I don't get it right on camera, just forgive me because it does take a little bit of play and I don't want to bore you with all my playtime. So, okay, I've got two little tabs there. So what I'm going to do now is just add a small piece of the two-sided tape to either one of those tabs. 
both tabs, sorry. And I'm going to remove the backing. And I always, I like to start with the houses because they're the back ground per se of the snow globe. So it's always easier to work back to front. So once you have that, the other thing I should have done is I took a bone folder and you'll notice in the finished one that there's kind of a little bit of curve to each of those. I don't know if you can see that. So in order to do that, I just kind of, I took a bone folder and just kind of gave it a little curve so that it kind of made it a little bit of an S pattern. Just like that. So then I'm just going to tack that into place. Again, keep in mind where that hole is in the bottom. You want this to now be the right way or your tea light isn't going to line up very well. And if at all possible, try to keep um, your little silhouettes kind of to the front of that hole. You can kind of see so that when you go to slide your tea light in, it's going to go behind. I don't know if you can see that. You want it to go behind your silhouettes. Okay. So I have the, the little houses in place. And now I'm going to do the exact same thing with those little trees. So I'm going to add a piece of tape to either side. And you could always, if you want to add a little bit of color to this, it's simple enough to take a sponge dauber and um, you can add a little bit of color. I was going for pure black and white. I just thought it kind of looked um, a little bit, you know, just classy. I like to see a little bit of different um, colors for Christmas than just the standard usual, usual red and green all the time. So I'm just going to remove the backing off of that. And this one is going to be slightly offset from the houses, just sitting in front of the houses. So let's see if I can do this. This is the one that was giving me problems in my demo. It was just being awful. Oh, that wasn't so bad. Oh, geez. Not much better. Okay. <laughs> so much better. Okay, so those ones are in there. Now you may be thinking to yourself, whoa, I see a gap. That doesn't look very finished. It's not exactly what I was going for. But don't worry, we're going to cover that. So what I've done to, to kind of rectify that is I am using um, from the new set, Wonderland. I love this set. It's so pretty. These trees are gorgeous. I'm going to use the Silent Night sentiment that comes into it, comes from it. So then I'm just using some Memento Black ink, Tuxedo Black, and I'm just going to stamp on a piece of Whisper White cardstock, kind of towards the bottom, so that I can cut it out and make like a little banner from it. So we have that. Then you're going to want to cut that cardstock down to be roughly, um, let's see, you want to go about half an inch high. So I'll just roughly eyeball that. Or so. And then you're going to want to trim that down to be about two and a half inches or so. So I'm just going to kind of snip off a little bit here on each side and then um, using the small banner punch what you're going to want to do is if you take this and you feed it through the top oh it's not quite I gotta cut mine down a little bit you need it to be exactly the width or smaller of that banner so let me just let me just nip a little bit more off the bottom here, make sure we're straight. There, now we should work. Okay, so now it should feed right into that top of that punch. And I'm going to slide it just about right up to the end of that sentiment. And when I punch, it's going to give me that neat little banner. 
and we'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay. So now you can either use um, the liquid glue or glue dots or whatever you like. And we're just going to glue that into place at the bottom if it will stick. And my fingers are sticky, so it doesn't want to stick. Okay. There we go. So, I just want to kind of center that a little bit more. There. So, then you have your sentiment. And then just to finish it off, I took um, the little star that comes in the itty bitty punch pack. And... I punched out a couple of those and just for the sake I will let's see here I think I threw one about here and one up there and then there so that completes the top of your snow globe so now what you need to do is you need to do the bottom portion of the snow globe that holds the tea light and kind of finishes everything off and gives it a little stand. So what you're going to do is take a piece of basic black cardstock and you're going to cut that to be one inch high and five inches long and you're going to score only one long side edge at a roughly a quarter inch and just as we did before we're going to cut tabs along that edge. You can see them here. And we're not going to fold those in. We're not going to do anything with those yet. We're just going to um, just leave them as they are for now. And if you're having trouble figuring out, because it's, I mean, I'm only telling you five inches because that's the actual diameter of this particular battery operated tea light. But again, measure the diameter, figure it out, figure out your circumference the exact same way that we did the top of the snow globe and you'll be set to go. Just remember to have that small addition for the overlap so that we can tape this together. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to use my battery operated tea light and I'm going to wrap this piece of cardstock around and I'm going to remove that backing and this makes sure that I'm going to leave enough little wiggle room that that tea light can get in and out, but I want it to be quite snug so that it can get in and out easily. And you can change it and you can, you know, batteries die and you need to turn it off and on and all that good stuff. So when you get to that point, you can remove the tea light and I'm going to fold these tabs inwards. Okay, just like so. And then my best solution for gluing this on, making it sure it, that it's secure, that it's not going to go anywhere, is I'm going to use hot glue. You can use the Tombow glue again if you'd like, but I just find that it takes so long to stick. So I'm just going to run a bead of hot glue. Is my glue gun not plugged in? It's just upset with me today. I don't think I plugged it in. Oh, typical. What do you do? So, okay, let's pretend. <laughs> Here's my hot glue. <laughs> okay. So what you want to do is flip it over pretend this is hot glue because it'll stick so much easier. Use hot glue people. And we're going to center that on that hole and we're going to have a waiting game because this is going to take forever to tack up. So let's just pretend that's tacked up. You're going to want to glue that down and once you glue that down you're going to get that. And then it's just as simple as turning your tea light on, sliding it up and you have a fully assembled little snow globe.
So I hope you have fun with this one. I'd love to see what you've done. If you're looking for any more tutorials or you'd like to send me photos of what you've done, you can find me at www.porchswingcreations.com. Um, I look forward to hearing from you. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.